Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, I'm Stacy Weckstein, and you can find my work at stacywextein.biz and esmemylove.com. You're listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a very talented individual. This is part three of three separate interviews about this amazing film called SMA My Love. We had director Corey Choi on earlier on today. We had, of course, the amazing, talented cinematographer DP Fletcher Wolf as well. We're joined by the ever talented Stacey Weckstein. She plays Hannah on SMA My Love. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Better than my introductions. <laughs> no, no. Your introduction was great. It was live. <laughs> For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Yeah, um, my name is Stacy Weckstein. I am originally from Oklahoma, and I've been in New York for some time now. And I mostly work on short films and recently did this feature with Corey and Fletcher and Audrey and many other crew that you can find their names on imdb.com. I like to, you know, act and I'm also a writer and I'm producing and yeah, I think that's like a high level summary. That's wonderful. So multifaceted in, as many people are in the film industry. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Have to be nowadays. <laughs> Maybe always. <laughs> yeah. What is the most misunderstood aspect about the psychological thriller genre as an actress that people outside the industry may not grasp? Hmm, the most misunderstood aspect. I think it's probably that you you assume somebody is, if they're the villain or if they're the person who is maybe going through something intense that they're crazy or they're irrational. But I think from their perspective, they are simply either protecting someone they love and really going after that as opposed to going after the crazy or the attack mode. It's really coming from it from an objective of, of wanting something that is positive to them and not something that is uh, sinister. I think that maybe that's possibly misunderstood i don't know <laughs> there's a variety of different genres that we're so used to seeing continuously and being on the main focal point of the from the camera's point of view yourself as an actress though it's it's interesting to see that kind of headspace as to what you have to do to get into that especially with a role like hannah and with sma my love yeah yeah i think i think getting into it is really just connecting with the circumstances which is the main part of any acting role is you're connecting with who is this person that I'm acting with? What do I want from them? And how am I going to go about getting it? And what's at stake if, if, if I can't get it? And I think in this case, you know, what's at stake is she feels her daughter's life, which is about as high as you can go, unless you want to say the world is higher than one person. <laughs> the needs of many versus the needs of the few so <laughs> yeah. a famous quite, quite possibly you know what drew you to the role of hannah and sma my love and how did you prepare to bring the depth and authenticity to the character yeah um i think what drew me to the role was the script was mysterious it's only two characters you're really carrying this um as an actor and it's a great opportunity to do a full journey with just one person and to find how much variety and spice you can find in in all of that which luckily Corey and Fletcher and uh, gave us a lot to work with I think my preparation was 
was pretty intense. I would read through the script repeatedly. I broke down the scenes. I would put them in different orders. I had like just nerdy stuff that actors do. And in addition, we also had some pretty, a lot more rehearsal, in fact, than I've ever had on a film. It's, it felt more, Corey, it comes from an audio background. So it was kind of interesting and in that he would have us rehearse in the sound studio, just the audio, and you would do it back and forth and rehearse in that way. And then in addition to that, I would go home and rehearse because I, I like to be physical. So I would, I would rehearse physically, like the different behaviors and how, and play around with what I could find in that way. And that, that was one thing that I noticed about the trailer here and, and speaking with Corey and Fletcher as well, too. You know, you, you had to dive into the lake. You had to do that type of physical aspect. There was other areas that I'm sure the trailer highlighted as well, too. I can't wait to see the digital version of this once it, it finally comes out on June 2nd. That's when this interview is going to be released as well, too. So it's, it just seems like an exciting and wonderful time. Yeah, yeah. It is really exciting to finally see it uh, come to fruition and see the full thing. Because as an actor, you don't you don't know. No, I mean, the editor holds so so much of the cards, really. <laughs> we can only do so much. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. You can do so. You can do so much. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the one thing I noticed in the in the trailer as well, too, was that the chemistry you had with, of course, your amazing co-star, Audrey Grace Marshall, as well, too. How did that on-screen chemistry happen and feel throughout the production, even maybe the pre- and post-production of the film? And yeah. How did working with her enhance the overall dynamic of these characters? Oh, I mean, Audre is simply phenomenal. She's, people sometimes at some of the film festival interviews would be like, "What? what's it like working with a child? And to be honest, I, I never thought of her as a child. She didn't behave. I mean, in some ways, obviously she behaved as a child. She had toys and, and things on set. But as far as acting with her, it's, it was pure play. It was it was delightful. She was always prepared and professional. And I think as far as our connection goes, we had a lot of opportunity and that we, one, were ha housed in the same location. So we would be eating breakfast together. We would travel over to the set together. Even when you think about just the initial chemistry audition, Corey had us in Prospect Park and we were playing together as if it was the real film already in some ways. And Audrey's mother was on set and she was extremely helpful in kind of teaching me how to enhancing my motherly behavior and making sure that as I was grabbing her, it was the way a mother would grab her because initially it was too soft. Like I, I was afraid of hurting her because she, she was tiny. <laughs> Things like that really, um, I think helped create the chemistry, just time really. It was a short shoot as well too, 13 days. I mean, that, that's not a lot of time to really put together a feature either. Like that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the pre-prep that Corey did in the sound studio with us rehearsing that way, even his, what I'd mentioned, the Prospect Park callbacks, even that I think helped in some ways. That was his rehearsal and prep and ours. <laughs> you've, you've won some awards for this, and that's always a wonderful recognition as an actor, actress for, for this as well, too. And um, it's great to see that it did amazing in the indie film festival circuit here as well, too. It's being released on June 2nd here. How does it feel to witness the positive reception and recognition that you had with SMA My Love from both audience and critics? It's really delightful to know that people, one, are enjoying the work and all the hard work you put into it, and two, like to see you do the thing that you love to do. <laughs> so it's delightful. So then how about your this performance on Esme My Love, what set your performance apart in this film compared to other roles you've had? I think a lot of the roles that I've done in the past can sometimes be more, I, uh, I, what's the word? They're more talky mm -hmm. in a sense to where it's uh, sometimes patter or something as opposed to this is was really a physical movie. Like you said, I, I'm diving underwater, I'm digging, I'm, we're running through the woods, it, which is really nice because my hobby is I enjoy hiking. So it, it was 
quite heavenly to be able to act and be in the woods. And also this was my first, I think I, I can say my first real feature I had done, I think uh, something that was maybe, I think it still would have been classified as a short film. So mm -hmm. this was my first real feature, which is um, where I was the lead, I should say. Yeah. And you've done such a great job with this as well, too. You know, what is it about acting that excites you? And what is it about acting that drains you? Well, I think the most exciting part is being on set, getting to play with other people, getting to dive into scripts and other worlds and play around with behavior and voices and different thoughts than what you would allow yourself to have. Uh, I think that's the best part. The hardest and most difficult part is actually getting the opportunity to do that. So, you know, it's the auditioning process right now. We're in a strike. There, there is no auditions. It's that it's the, how do you fill your time when you're not working? Because most of your time is not working. So you have to find ways to get that joy and pleasure, either by doing other things, like you said, producing, writing, rehearsing scenes with your friends, taking classes. Being in the city that never sleeps, obviously there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot of excitement and opportunities uh, around there. What are you currently producing or writing that you can talk about? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the early stages of producing a feature film with uh, his name, Sam uh, Levy, who I worked with on a short called Yes Vacancy, I think, gosh, many years ago. I want to say five years ago, eight years ago, something like that. And uh, he normally writes uh, comedic stuff. And this film is more of a uh, family drama film. That's what we're working on right now. It's called The Rugged Cross. And it's about a radio host who is struggling to care for her dementia-addled mother. And her mother gives away a significant sum of money to this evangelical preacher. And so the daughter sets out to prove that this preacher is basically preying on all these older people. And so it's a combo. I mean, the heart of the story for me is really the mother-daughter relationship and the family trying to connect when you come from two opposing things with the ticking time clock of her illness. It's going to be a feature. Nice. That's great. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Oh, that's hard. I think, um, I don't know how early this is, but I remember going to a Shakespeare uh, camp. This, this is actually not early. I really discovered the delightfulness in language, which is not exactly the same question, but the different colors that it can have and the different meanings that one word can bring, which is really in some ways powerful. Is there a monologue that you can always go to that kind of inspires you to act your best? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> uh, a, a go-to. That would be nice. I should come up with a, a monologue or a power song. <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone usually asks, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most BS piece of advice you've ever received? But what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your career? I think is to stay open and curious and not to judge, especially in the times that we're living in right now. It's so easy to take somebody's words or actions and quickly judge them as opposed to staying curious and thinking, what is that about? Or what's interesting about what they're saying, as opposed to automatically going to the negative or the fight. I think that that's a good way to approach things. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Oh, I think I'm very lucky. I had many people who inspired me on my path. It started, I guess it would start with my dad. My dad and I used to, he used to play piano and I would sing with him and he would get really into characters. And I remember growing up, he would always kind of MC some of the school events. And so that definitely inspired me. And also he's, he's a basketball coach and he's very driven and he's won many state championships. He also used to play in the minor leagues and I think he got injured and couldn't play anymore and he moved on to the next career. So in some ways, the point is, is that if one dream falls, another dream can reappear and you can pursue that just as hard as opposed to always living in the longing of that other 
thing of what could have been. From a professional standpoint, you have been an actress for many years and you're doing extremely well with that. And, and I love seeing your IMDb, but I want to see more of your, your work. So that means you just have to come back on in the future and talk about yourself in more great detail about your next amazing project. <laughs> yes, so. let's wish it into the <laughs> into being. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you <laughs> consider yourself personally successful? I think... I consider myself successful in that I'm still going, but I don't in that I am not a full-time, I, I would love to have more projects. And I think that that is like any actor, any creative, you just want more and you just want more and more and more because it makes you so happy. Like I, I miss getting to do theater. I would love to do a play. I would love to be on set every day if I could just waking up going to set, rehearsing, playing, living in another world. That's the dream. And so in some ways, if I could do that even 10 days more a year, that that would be a growth, <laughs> you know. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? I think I'm lucky in that I, in some ways, I'm always been a bit of a failure. I'm slow at many things. I'm not super bright. So I've always had to work extra hard. I've always had to study and I never assumed that I would be successful at anything. And so anytime I am successful at something, it's delightful. It's extra delightful. So I think in that way, I'm of the hustle mentality of you work, you do the homework, you read, you do the work. And hopefully it begets something. If it doesn't, then, and you mess up, then you learn from the mess up and you keep going. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a, an actor, actress, or a writer, producer, whatever it may be in the entertainment industry, maybe you've inspired them in some way, shape, or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I think that by continuing to create their work, having respect for each other. And when you see someone who is either talented or kind and not just a flat out jerk, you lend them a hand. If, especially if they're asking for it, sometimes if they're not asking for it, you just lend them a hand. I've met so many people who come to New York and they're like, Oh, what classes should I take? Where do I even find auditions? And it's, takes you three seconds to help someone why not yeah and be happy be happy when other people are working because that means that you're one step closer to working you know someone who's working there's a lot of there can be envy in in certain elements of this and I think if you if you reverse that and are just happy and genuinely happy for when other people are working it's going to be a lot easier road for you <laughs> if your life was a movie what would its title be and what would its soundtrack be <laughs> i think the title would be never enough dogs and uh maybe the soundtrack would be i don't know some sort of jazz music yeah, it'd probably be hopping from dog park to dog park and, and just just a woman staring at, at, at furry things all the time. <laughs> Sounds like a great short. <laughs> well, stay say do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. <laughs> Before I let you go, though, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is Esme My Love and anything else you'd like to promote? Yeah, Esme My Love is at Esme My Love. Dot com And you can go there on June 2nd and it will list all the locations that you can see the film. And any info on me and the stuff that I'm producing is just on my website, stacywexstein.biz. Thanks. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview in a thousand, probably 1,200 plus others. I've lost count since 2008 <laughs> on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Of course, our website's going through a revamp because, you know, reasons, and I'm only one person. And of course, 
go to our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash TGT media. The podcast is back after 12 years, which you can find it at two geeks talking about podbean.com or just search for two geeks talking on iTunes, Spotify, and any of your favorite podcasting streaming services. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.